Hey everybody, welcome to Christmas time at Unity Church. We are so excited that you are joining us today. I do have to tell you, we are dealing with one of the heaviest, most awesome topics in all of scripture today. And you know what? I think it's the perfect time of the year for us to be discussing our topic. Well, I don't want to ruin it, and we'll get to everything in just a little bit, but before we go any further, let's check in with Special Agent Jack Bow Wow and see what he has to tell us today. Hello, recruits. It's me, Jack. By now, you've already heard about how Jesus was arrested for no reason, and he was beaten and put to death on a cross. Now, many people have asked the question, why didn't Jesus just call 10,000 angels to come and defend him? That way he wouldn't have had to die. Well, you are going to hear all about the why in today's training. You're going to have to listen closely because your leader is going to teach you a lesson called Tough Choices. It's all about the choices that had to be made in order for you and I to receive salvation. So listen carefully Every word could change your life. Until next time, this is Special Agent Jack Bow Wow signing off. Man, Special Agent Bow Wow was so right. Life is full of choices. Some choices are super easy. Like, what are you going to have for breakfast? You're going to have this type of cereal or this type of cereal. Uh, or, uh, what color socks are you going to wear today? What will match your outfit? Is it this color sock or is it this color sock? I don't know. Uh, but not all choices are easy. Some are more difficult. You know, maybe like, where are you going to go to college? And, and I know this is gross and icky, but who you're going to marry someday? I know, crazy. But you're going to have to make that decision at some point. And those decisions are tough. But choices... They're just a part of being a human. It's part of our life. The choices we make can make or break our future. But here's the thing. We aren't the only ones that have to make choices. Everybody goes through it. Everybody has to make choices every day. Some are easy, some are tough. But not only do we make choices, did you know that God has made choices? I know that sounds silly, but if we think about it, he's had to make some pretty big choices over the years. And we're going to talk about some of those choices today. God made the incredibly difficult choice to, to create this world. And then he chose to send his son, Jesus, his one and only son, to this earth so he could rescue us. Well, Jesus had to make some choices. First, he had to make the choice to leave heaven. He had a pretty cushy, awesome existence in heaven. But because he loved us, he made the choice to leave there and come to earth. And finally, which is what our topic of discussion is today, he made the choice to die on a cross for us. Man, the hardest choice that anyone has ever had to make, Jesus made for us. In our lesson today, we're going to learn about these tough choices and how these choices impact the world and us today. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T-L-E-L. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about God's love. So every time somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. God loves everyone in the world. You know, it don't matter who you are. God loves everybody just the same. Um, but what if I'm short and I'm skinny and I'm allergic to everything? <laughs> uh, sorry. It don't matter. God chose to send his son Jesus to die on a cross for the whole world. That means he loves everybody just the same. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you, what's up, you tell them. God loves everyone in the world. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior, Skittles out, baby. Yeah. 
you know, today's study comes from the book of Luke, chapter 22. In our study, uh, we've had a great time walking through um, the, the last 24 hours of Jesus' life. You know, we started out with Jesus at the, at the Last Supper with his disciples where he had uh, a, 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 the last kind of moment of quiet with his, with his own followers. And then we had him t- talk to his disciples about and kind of warn them that bad things were coming for them, that times were going to get scary. But then uh, he, he reminded them that they didn't have to face those tough times alone, that he was going to be with them and help guide them through those tough times. Well, tonight we're going to finish up uh, the rest of our story. You know, uh, last week we talked about uh, how Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane with a few of his disciples to pray. It was a time for him to uh, gain some needed strength for, the, for what was coming ahead. And we talked about how difficult it was. Well, in our story today, uh, we're going to look at um, what happened at the end of that portion of scripture. You see, Jesus was in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, uh, having, having such an, uh, an emotional time with God. His disciples that were with him uh, were having a difficult time staying awake, but they clearly awoke to the sound of marching boots. You see, the Roman soldiers uh, were approaching them. They had been sent by the religious leaders in Jerusalem. Well, uh, the disciples hear them coming, but but then they notice the person leading this band of soldiers. It was one of Jesus' own disciples. It was a guy named Judas Iscariot. Well, he's the one that betrayed Jesus. In fact, he pointed Jesus out to the soldiers so they knew who they were going to be arresting. See, he had taken a bribe, 30 pieces of silver. And that's all it took to buy Judas's, um, his his uh, dignity, his integrity. Um, that's all it took for him to sell Jesus out. So the Roman soldiers arrested Jesus. And they took him to face the religious leaders. You see, they were jealous of Jesus. He was gathering large crowds of people every time he spoke. He was getting, uh, he was convincing a lot of people uh, what the truth was of God's word. He was teaching them a, 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 a way to live for God in freedom and in happiness and joy. But the religious leaders, well, they justified their existence by telling people that they could only live for God by rules and by regulations and by obeying their, their teachings. Not obeying God, but obeying them. And the the, the Pharisees and the religious leaders didn't like that at all, that Jesus was teaching them something different. So they were set, they were set out, they were going to get rid of Jesus for good. So they made up some things. They told everybody that Jesus had broken some laws, which he hadn't, that he was doing illegal things, which he wasn't. And they were trying to convince everybody that Jesus was nothing but a criminal, which of course he wasn't. But Jesus didn't defend himself. He stayed silent and allowed them to accuse him of some pretty nasty things. What happened next was horrible. The soldiers, they whipped Jesus. With a whip, they beat him. Then they punched Jesus. They kicked Jesus. Then they took a string of thorns and they wrapped it into a crown shape, and they shoved it on Jesus' head. It was excruciating pain. But through it all, Jesus remained silent. He didn't fight back. He didn't, he didn't do anything to defend himself. He chose to allow this to happen. Then Jesus was brought before Pilate, a judge. And Pilate tried to find something wrong that he had done, He interviewed Jesus. He interviewed some other people. And he really couldn't find anything wrong that Jesus had done. Pilate wanted to let Jesus go. But the religious leaders weren't having anything to do with that. You know, they were like, no, you've got to 
have him uh, put away. You got to have him done away with. He's done so many bad things, of which Pilate couldn't really prove, and neither could the religious leaders, but they were just so adamant that they had to get rid of Jesus. So what Pilate did was he, he turned to the crowd of Jews that were amassed outside of his building, and he said, I'm going to let them choose. He says, guys, Jews, he's one of you. He's a Jew just like you. What do you want to do with him? And they yelled out in one voice, crucify him, crucify him. Well, that broke, that broke the, the, the straw for Pilate. And he said, okay, y'all made your choice. And he sent Jesus to be crucified. You see, crucifixion was where someone would die hanging on a wooden cross. Jesus was led to the top of a hill just outside of town. And he was nailed to the cross through his hands and his feet. The soldiers laughed at him. The soldiers made fun of him. But instead of getting angry, instead of doing all the stuff that he could have done because he was God's son, he was God himself, Jesus prayed for them. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. How on earth could the man being hung on a cross have pity on the men hanging him there he had to be a special man he had to be a great man not to hold anger over them for what they were doing Jesus died on the cross that day there were several choices that were made that led up to this moment in history we're going to learn about these tough choices today. We're going to learn about who made these big decisions and how it affected all of us from that, that point on. So pay close attention because today, I promise you, you're going to learn something that's going to change your life forever. <laughs> well, 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 children, it is I, Dr. Full of Wax, and I'm back with another secret message from Q-Tip's cold book, The Bible. I shall discover and decipher its true meanings. Isn't that right, Mr. Cuddles? Mm. This week's secret message says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Hmm, now this is an interesting message. Perhaps if I have some help saying it, then it will become more clearer to my brain. How about if the girls stand up and help me? Are you ready, girls? On the count of three. One, two, three. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Very good, girls. Now you can sit down. Now I need the boys to stand up to say it with me. Then maybe I can figure out what this message means. Ready, boys? On the count of three. One, two, and three. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Great job. You may sit down. You know, I think I may have figured out what this message means. You see, choices are all part of being an evil doctor. Which henchman should I promote to evil party coordinator? Which type of hair removing syrup should I put in Agent Bow Wow shampoo? What deodorant brand should I switch to? Old Spice or Dove? These are hard choices I have to make every day. But this week's code says that God had to make some choices too. God chose to send Jesus to earth. 
Jesus chose to leave heaven and die on a cross. Those seem like tough choices, Mr. Corbus. And I think I solved it. But just to make sure I got it right, let's have everyone stand up and say it with me, okay? On the count of three. Ready? Everybody. One, two, three. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Good job, everybody. You can have a seat. Well, Agent Bow Wow, looks like I cracked your code and learned something that would make me a better person. <laughs> nah. I better get back to trying to crack Q-Tip's code book, The Bible. Until next time, I'm Dr. Full of Wax, and this is Mr. Cuddles bidding you adieu. Hello, recruits. It's me, Jack. By now, you've already heard about how Jesus was arrested for no reason, and he was beaten and put to death on a cross. Now, many people have asked the question, why didn't Jesus just call 10,000 angels to come and defend him? That way, he wouldn't have had to die. Well, you are going to hear all about the why in today's training. You're going to have to listen closely, because your leader is going to teach you a lesson called Tough Choices. It's all about the choices that had to be made in order for you and I to receive salvation. So listen carefully. Every word could change your life. Until next time, this is Special Agent Jack Bow Wow signing off. Life is full of choices. Like what you're going to wear to school. That's an easy choice. Uh, what you're going to eat for breakfast, that's usually an easy choice. Uh, what you're going to do at recess at school, that's normally a super easy choice because a lot of people do the same thing every day. Uh, what kind of video game you want to play, Xbox or PlayStation? You know, that's pretty much an easy choice. Xbox all day long. Am I right? Yeah. So, uh, I'm an Xbox guy. So, um, but there are some choices that aren't so easy. You know, like... Uh, College, that's a tough choice. Uh, finding the right friends, it's a tough choice. Um, what you're, what you're going to do for a career one day, who you're going to date and marry, those are all big decisions, big choices, tough choices. But choices are just part of being a human. We all make decisions every day. Our choices make a huge difference on our future. You know, they make it better or worse. But, you know, we're not the only ones that have to make tough choices. In fact, a lot of people have to make big choices every day. We all do. But not only do we have to make tough choices, but so did God. For the next few minutes, we're going to talk about these tough choices that had to be made that affected all of human history from that moment on. Today, our lives are affected by the decisions that were made in our story today. We learned in our Bible story today all about Jesus' death on the cross. It's such an, a sad, heartbreaking story. But today, we're going to talk now about the story behind the story and show you some tough choices that had to be made. The first choice that affected us today, and that was a huge decision for God to make, was God chose to send Jesus. God is the creator of the entire universe. He's the ruler of everything. He is the greatest power that has ever or will ever be. He doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. He does what he pleases. God is our Heavenly Father. He created us to be in a relationship with Him. Just look at Adam and Eve. When they were created, they, the Bible says they got to spend time walking and talking with God in the garden. 
God created them to love him and know him and to be with him. And it was a beautiful relationship. But sin entered the world. When the, when the devil tempted Eve to sin and then Eve gave the fruit to Adam, it's such a heartbreaking time. And, and God uh, had to punish their sin. It ended the relationship, well, the closeness in the relationship that they had. And they had to leave the garden. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the penalty or the payment for our sins is death. That death is separation from the awesome life that God has planned for us. So God made one of the toughest choices of all. Our power verse today teaches us about that tough choice. It says... For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God chose to send his one and only son, Jesus, to come to this earth and die in our place. That is a tough choice. Can you imagine being a parent and choosing to let your child die for someone else, knowing that your child is innocent, that is a tough choice. But that's how much God loved us. He chose to send Jesus to this earth. But not only that, but Jesus chose to leave heaven. Jesus lived in heaven, the most perfect place in the whole universe. He had the perfect life that was the son of the creator of everything. But however, Jesus chose to leave all that behind to come to this earth and to be born as a baby. And that's what we're celebrating at Christmas. We're celebrating Jesus' birth. But he had to come because he loved us. Jesus was born in a stable around a bunch of animals. That's not exactly the birth of a king. But that's how Jesus chose to leave heaven and come to this earth. Isn't it amazing? He didn't come as a king. He came like one of us. He came as someone who was normal and poor and just one of the everyday people so that he could reach out and show his love to us and become our king through the way that we would best receive him. He left a perfect home in heaven to come be a human being just like us. But you know, that's not the cho biggest choice that Jesus made. Jesus also chose to die on a cross. Jesus let the men arrest him. And he didn't say a word. Jesus let the religious leaders accuse him even though he was innocent. Jesus let the soldiers beat him and nail him to a cross, and he didn't fight them. You know, but he could have. He could have stopped it at any moment. As the Son of God, he could have called down 10,000 angels to come out of heaven and kick these bad guys' backsides and to get rid of them and to stop all this. He could have ended the whole process before it got bad. He could have stopped it all, but he didn't. Because he knew that this process was necessary if he was going to rescue us from our sins. He had to go through all of this so that we wouldn't have to. He had to take our punishment. Wow, isn't that amazing? He did all that for us because he loves us. You know, I, when I think about it, I have to ask myself, do I love him as much as he loves me? Do I love God enough to make some tough choices for him? And he loved us so much that he let, chose to leave heaven. He chose to die on the cross. He chose to love us and to show us how much he loves us. But do I show him that kind of love? Jesus to chose to die 
in my place, in your place. Most of us can't imagine choosing to take someone else's punishment when we are innocent. Can you imagine if your little brother or sister did something and got in big trouble with mom and dad and they were in the wrong? You know they were, they knew they were in the wrong. They knew they shouldn't have done it. But before mom and dad could punish them, you said, hey, stop mom and dad. Let me have their whooping. Let me have their uh, being put on restriction. Take my device from me. Don't let me watch TV, but let them watch it. Whatever the punishment is, you say, I want to take their punishment. I don't think any of us would be willing to do that. Do you? Do you? I don't think so. And that punishment's little, much less dying for someone else's sin when we didn't do any of it. That's what the decision that Jesus had to make. He never, ever sinned. He never did anything wrong. He didn't deserve to be punished. But, but we do. We all sin. And the Bible says that our penalty for our sin is death and separation from God. So Jesus did the one thing that was necessary. He died so that we wouldn't have to. So that we could love Him, be in relationship with Him now, and go to heaven when we die. He did that for us. He, he made that possible. Today, I want to encourage you to thank God for His sacrifice. As we celebrate Christmas, I want you to remember why he had to come. He came because he loves us. And then I want to encourage you to think about your life with God. Have you been loving him enough to make the choices that need to be made for him? I know it's scary to tell our friends about Jesus. But do you love him enough to do that? I know it's scary to stand up against the bullies in your class that want you to do some bad things. But do you love God enough to do it? Or maybe you're struggling with a sin. You know, it's a bad sin. You know, maybe you know a lot of people that do it, but it's still wrong. But do you love God enough to quit doing the sin? He promised that when the tough times come, He's going to be with you to help you through it. He's going to help you through the sin so that you can come out on the other side and have forgiveness and hope and freedom that comes from forgiveness. But do you love Him enough to do it? There's a song that's about to play. It's a beautiful song called God Forgave. And I'll encourage you to listen to the words of this song. And when the song's over, why don't you talk to God for a little bit and pray to Him and thank Him for what He did. And then be honest with Him and ask for His help. There's a man in the Bible who asked God to help him with something big. And he said, God, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. But help my unbelief. Because there's still a little bit of me that struggles to trust you. Maybe you could be honest with Jesus and say, Jesus, I love you. But there's still part of me that doesn't love you enough. Can you help me love you more? May this Christmas season be the time where you finally give God your all. Where you finally become completely in love with Him. Enough to make those tough choices just like he made for you. Jesus came to save us, came to forgive our every sin, and He gave His life so we could live. No matter how this world will test me, I know how much Jesus loves me.
Well, let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much for loving us. We ask you, Father, to bless us. We ask you, Father, to remind us every day about your love for us and help us to love you enough to make the tough choices. You showed the example for us. You showed us what it's like to love someone enough to make the hard decisions. So, Lord, help us follow your example and to begin to do the same thing, to love you enough to make those tough choices, the choices to follow you, to love you, and to obey you. We we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, guys, remember, we're meeting here in church now. So if you live here in East North Carolina, we'd love to have you join us here at Unity Church. Our church website is unityfwb.org. If you'd like to learn more about our church and what's going on in our children's ministry, check that website out. Feel free to email me at ty at unityfwb.org. And I'd love to answer any of your questions and help you uh, find out more about this amazing God that we serve. Hey, we're here Sundays at 9 and 1030 and Wednesday nights at 630. And we'd love to have you and your family join us. Until next time, be safe, have an awesome time this week, and don't forget about all the stuff that's going on with the Advent this week. We're putting stuff every day on our church on our church Facebook and Instagram pages to remind you of God's love each and every day during this Christmas season. We hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.